data scientist community. So, and, and we're using a lot of open source in, in our tools. Of course, AWS has the service team that are building products, etc. cetera. Um, we always try to use what the native AWS analytics, because if there is a, a service that, that solve the problem, but if not, we are looking at third party or open source. But um, one other things that people do not know that we are also, some of our customers are Amazon themselves. So Amazon has different business units from Alexa, Amazon Go. And we actually help them as well because they are using AWS. And I joined Amazon in 2013 when Amazon Web Services has 15 services. And today it's like almost 200. So it's uh, the platform evolved over the years. So, and I've been in the data analytics probably most of my career. My background is uh, distributed computing. So a big fan of what LinkedIn did with Kafka and others. So, you know, Jay and Nia from, past life where before Confluent. So always happy to join back to the meetups and team. So now with my role, I think uh, there is a tight correlation of things that we can do together on the open source. So happy to help. And again, I'm not sending any AWS services in here. So just from, from sharing knowledge and, and learn from you as well. So nice to meet you. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right. We have Harshal who's come back. So yeah. take it away, Harshal. Awesome. Yep. So past couple of weeks, I've been working on a new Python ingestion framework for Data Hub. Um, first off is kind of why did we do this? Um, so, you know, the status quo was that people were using the Python ingestion framework that we had previously it was really just a set of scripts. Um, and they were already using that to ingest metadata into Data Hub. But, you know, there were a couple shortcomings there. Um, specifically, you know, it was hard to ingest via both Kafka and the REST API. If you wanted to get instantaneous feedback, you'd want the REST API, but using that with those scripts wasn't possible. And another thing was that we had these opaque JSON blobs that you would ingest into Data Hub. And it was based on Avro, which is a serialization format similar to like Protobuf. The issue is that it's it's pretty difficult to use. And there were a lot of sharp edges. People run into issues, not know what the schema was for the, the um, and, or you know how to format their data, and so we get a lot of questions around what what is even possible with that, um, and specifically, you know, not having type annotations around that was was something that a lot of people struggled with, um, and they'd run into a bunch of runtime errors when they try to try to execute their code, but they wouldn't actually have any prior warning. And then the other thing was that in order to configure your metadata ingestion, you need to go and modify a bunch of code, which was not the ideal situation. Ideally, you just modify some configuration uh, and then the code remains the same. Um, what we found is that people wanted to stick with Python because of the, the ecosystem around it, all of the open source projects. Um, you know, things like Airflow and NumPy and, and TensorFlow and so forth. And so they were used to this. They wanted to continue to use it to ingest data into Data Hub. Um, and we wanted a, a principled way to make that happen. So how did we approach this? The first thing was that to solve the problem around the schema for Avro and ingesting data, we, we took the schema from Data Hub and we did code generation to generate a bunch of Python classes that are fully typed. And you know because it's code gen, always in sync with the data hub schema. And this way, you always know exactly what, what is possible, what you can ingest, and what you can't. The next thing, we wanted to be able to support writing to Kafka or writing to data hub via either Kafka or the REST API. And as I said, it's a trade-off between throughput versus immediate feedback with Kafka, you write and then you forget. And you know you don't necessarily know that it was processed correctly until you, you receive the, the audit event or the failed metadata event back. Whereas with the REST API, it's a little bit more instantaneous. And so for different use cases, we wanted to use different things and we wanted to enable that. Um, we were inspired by Apache Goblin for the uh, architecture of this. And I'll go into a little bit more detail as to what that means. And the final thing that we, we made sure to do when, when architecting this was 
have a file-based configuration. So you write configuration in a YAML or a TOML file. And then you know you can just run the data hub ingestion framework against that config. Um, this enables easier testing and debugability, um, but it also enables you to just have more flexibility when you're running the ingest framework. So how did we architect this? As I mentioned, it was inspired by Apache Goblin. Right now we have two main abstractions. One is the source and the other is the sync. So it syncs, these are the methods that you can take a event of some sort and write it into data hub. Uh, and that can happen over Kafka, over REST, or for debugging purposes, you can just dump it to the console or write it to a file. The event that all of these operate on is the metadata change event. So this is, this is a central concept in data hub. Um, every single event or every single change in metadata is modeled as a metadata change event. And you can update, um, you know, basically do all of the operations that you want to do by emitting a number of uh, MCEs or metadata change events. And then finally, we had we have the sources. And these are wide and varied, everything from databases to a file to even like ingesting the metadata of Kafka itself. Um, and as long as the source can create a metadata change event, we were hoping that you know we can just plug it into the rest of this framework and get all the benefits accordingly. So I will talk a little bit more about um, what it actually takes to add a source as well. So, you know, as with all live demos, I'm gonna take a stab at it. Um, but you know, things go wrong in live demos, so bear with me. Um, hopefully you can all still see my screen here. So all of this is in the metadata ingestion directory. Um, the easiest way to install it, we can build the schemas from uh, the rest of data hub. And then we have a relatively simple set of commands. You can just copy and paste this into your terminal and get set up immediately. So the first thing that you might want to do is ingest some sample data. Um, and so the way to do that is data hub ingest. And then we included a number of examples. So example to data hub rest. So let's take a look at what this does before I run it. So this reads from a certain file, which is just a, a sample file that contains a JSON of, of all of the MCEs that we've previously constructed. And it sends them to data hub GMS over the REST API. So if we run this, we will see, oops, that it's not supposed to happen. Um, as with all demos, bear with me one sec. Um, I will worry about debugging that after. Theoretically, it will work. Um, so we will we'll fix that later. But what, what you'll see is, you know, you'll go to, to Data Hub, go in your data sets, and we'll see some stuff here. We'll, we'll fix the ingest. The other thing that, that I did, I, uh, I I'm a, used to be a student at Yale, uh, and I ran a course selection tool there with a MySQL database. And so I actually ingested this real world database into Data Hub. This is the configuration. There's a username and password above that I scrolled down. Uh, so, you know, we have the, the host port and then we have a, a filter rule so that you can filter out certain like MySQL tables and then allow the rest. In, initially, I just printed it out to the console, but we can actually write these to uh, Data Hub over Kafka this time, let's say. And so, oops, I've got to change the, uh, the recipe to run. And so we can run it. It will configure all of the um, ingestion, and then it will go through and, and ingest a number of tables. And then you get a nice summary of, of what happened. So it filtered out all of the MySQL internal tables, 
uh, here are all of the tables that it actually fetched. And so if we go into um, Data Hub, we can take a look at, let's say, the students table, and we get the full schema. We get you know a bunch of other information related to the tables that we just ingested. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the usage side of things. Let's talk a little bit about what it takes to add a source. Um, so the simplest source that we have, let's start with the source is .py. Here we go. So the abstraction that we have for a source, you need to be able to create it, get work units, and get a report. Uh, these are the three operations that a source needs to support. And if it supports those three, then we can integrate it into the rest of this framework. So as an example, here's a very simple source that just reads from a file. As I mentioned, we have like a, a bootstrap MCE file that just has, you know, a number of pieces of sample data. So it reads that and then, you know, constructs a metadata change event out of it using the code gen classes and then sends them into the rest of the framework and you know that's that's how simple it is to add a source a slightly more complex one let's take a look at the source for kafka so this ingests metadata about the topics and partitions and so forth in kafka and sends them into data hub um, and so here it's a little bit more complex. You connect, you construct your, your consumer, and then similar thing, you, know, you, you list your topics, iterate through them, and then yield metadata change events accordingly. And as long as you can do that, you can construct a metadata change event um, you know, using things like aspects and snapshots and all of these things that we're, we're relatively familiar with. As long as you can do that, then um, you know the source plugs into the rest of the, the framework accordingly. All right. So, last thing I wanted to talk about, touch upon, is where are we headed with can this? I, can I ask a question, Harshal? Yeah. Um, can you walk us through the code gen that you're doing from the Avro schemas? I thought that was uh, one of the hard things about this project. Yep. Sure. So um, let's take a look here. So the AVSC file, which is the Avro schema file, looks like a big JSON blob. And it has you know, all of the fields and everything accordingly. We have a code gen system um, that you know, I, I took from an open source project and, and modified, and I'm also working to contribute that back. Um, but the code gen system, basically, let's say this is the ML properties class. Um, so for this, let's let's do like data set snapshot. find this one. Here we go. So data set snapshot has a number of aspects. Each aspect can be either, you know, one of these things, so properties, deprecation, lineage, upstream lineage, memory, ownership, status, so forth. Um, when you construct it, you can automatically you know, add the, add the type systems and it all associates correctly. Uh, and this way, you know, if you run MyPy on this code, it actually completely checks every single assignment, every single constructor, all of that, so that you know for sure that, um, you know, the code is at least semantically correct in terms of types. Um, so that's, that's kind of a little bit on the code gen. Um, and obviously it generates a truly massive file of 5,000 lines. Um, so, you know, glad we aren't writing this by hand and updating it. Um, did that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank awesome. you. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about where we're headed with, with ingestion. So we're going to do 
a more formal RFC process on this relatively soon. And then hopefully also publish a packaged PyPy so that you can pip install, you know, data hub or, or something along those lines and then start executing this and you don't need to do the code gen yourself and all of those other steps. The other things are, are more functional improvements. So for example, detecting when um, metadata is stale. So if you have deleted a, a table in your source in let's say MySQL, we want to be able to detect that it disappeared and perform the according the, the associated deletion in um, data hub. Right now it's a purely like additive process and we can do updates, but the, the deletes are not something that we yet support. Um, another thing is validating that it was actually ingested correctly. So, you know, if you run with Kafka uh, and you ingest via that, you just send, you know, let's say 30 events to, uh, to a Kafka topic or to the broker, you don't necessarily know that those all got accepted correctly. And so doing that um, validation step would also be very helpful. And then on the Java ingestion side, so we have Python and we also have Java. We're you know, hopefully gonna continue doing a little bit of improvement on the Java ingestion side as driven by community needs. Um, so if people really love the, the Python, we're, we'll invest more on that. Um, if people still want to be able to use the, the Java, we'll, we'll do that accordingly as well. Um, and then the last thing is standardizing a testing harness between the two so that we can test um, functional parity between the, the Java and the Python. Um, any questions on all of this? I have one, Harshal. Um, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about how someone would productionalize this, say, in Airflow or something. Yeah, sure. Um, so we include um, a couple sample DAGs actually in Air in our in our repo, so that you can use this directly within Airflow. It's actually quite simple. Let's say for for MySQL, um, you know, you just create a pipeline give it a configuration um, and just call run. And um, you know, as long as you can do this within a Python operator of Airflow, you can run this and you'll get all the standard error reporting out of Airflow as you would expect. Um, so it is, it is production ready already. Um, and and you, know, you can use it however you like. Um, I think it does make sense to run it within an orchestration framework like Airflow or even cron if, if you want something sim simple um, so that you can continually get updated metadata from a, from a given source instead of just a one-time import. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, this is cool because uh, I know that Data Hub has this uh, positioning almost as push-based, right? And so a lot of people think that, oh, it's push-based, so I cannot pull metadata into this system. Uh, but I think this kind of shows uh, the people like how easy it is to, once you have a push-based system, you can always add on a pull-based system upstream of it to essentially pull metadata into your system. Um, and you don't have to really choose between the two. Yeah, you, can, you can do both if you want. Um, all right, so I had just very small logistical things to uh, go over very quickly. We can take some questions. Thanks, Harshal. Mm -hmm. Are you hosting office hours as well for ingestion? I can, if, if that's something people would be interested in. All right, all right. We won't sign you up yet. 